Yeah, hello Gearslot, Spitwick here on the Musikmesse 2015 and what we have running here is the alpha version of the upcoming Bitwick Studio 1.2 and uh, short introduction to Bitwick Studio, it's our music creation software, it's a sequencer that combines clip mounting and old school arranged page editing so you can use it in the studio, you can use it on the stage, you can do all things in between, jamming with clips with ideas or just getting your album material back into the clip launcher again and perform it live. So it's what I call a Swiss army knife of music production. Um, the whole software should appear really quick and should be not in your way to make music. And that's why we have a few new functions in one two that we are really happy about. The first thing would be the new, the new browser we have. If I want to enter or, or insert a new device into my project, I just create a new track, double click at the black device lane up there, down there, and then I get the new pop-up browser. This one is divided into devices, presets, multi-sample, samples, music, and now I can simply look for a preset. For example, I'm looking for a bass sound, and I really don't care what kind of device the bass sound comes from. I would just go to the preset tab and look for bass sounds in there. When I click into that column, I can now just cursor through all the presets and those presets for example are all for the search synthesizer that is a VST but if I go further down there are suddenly presets that are not from the VST but from our polysynth so it's really not depending on where the sound comes from it just inserts it in the device lane down there and it can play it directly to see what kind of sound I like and I'm not, really not limited to what kind of device it is. If I know what kind of device I'm looking for, and I don't care for the sound, maybe I just want to create a new one. I have the device browser, and I can say what kind of device type I'm looking for, for an instrument or for an audio effect. I can say I want to see only Bitmic devices, or all devices with the VSTs, and type in the first letters. Maybe I'm looking for Bacilla, cursor down, boom, there it is directly, press OK, and then there you go. It's a really, really quick way to find sounds, which is really important because you get inspiration, you want to play something, you look for a sound, and you want to be really, really quick. Another new feature in 1.2 was really what we already showed on NAMM show in January is group tracks. It's pretty straightforward. You just take a few tracks, select them, right click, group tracks, boom, and then creates a track with you. Well, it's a little bit slow at the moment, but still the alpha version. The final version will be just with the blink. Okay. Yeah. So let's start the other version to show you the instrument. There are new controllers coming out. There's a instrument by Roger Lin. There's a seaboard by Roly. Um, those are all controllers that try to be a bit more on the expression side of things. With a normal keyboard, I have just my keys, I have velocity, maybe I have aftertouch or a polyphonic or a polyphonic aftertouch. That's more or less it. You have the mod wheel and the and pitch band, which goes to the whole which goes to the whole channel, which is sad. Because with the instrument, let's search for sound for it. We have done a few presets directly for the instrument to show what it does. Let's go just for the simple synth. And the instrument is touch sensitive. What I can do is I can, I can play notes, I can slide them, and actually I can slide them at the same time, different notes. There's not only the slide, there's also the timbre parameter. And I can like that. It's not so obvious now in the sound, so let's just assign it to something else. It's really easy. Right. That's our timbre parameter. I click on it. I just say, okay, I want to have a bit more effect on the frequency of the cutoff. I want to have more resonance. Maybe the key tracking should go down when I use the timbre parameter. Boom. Assignment done. And when I now wiggle my finger up back and forth, you can see the rings around the parameters, how they are reacting to that. Um, the pitch band for every note. Right. Other sequences you have to use multiple B channels to achieve that. 
But as we had kernel automation already in Bitwig 1.0 when we released it one year ago, we are really happy that now all the controllers can happen because I can just record it. I have to take a look at what you record there. records actually every little movement in slides for every node. We want to click the notes directly and they can edit them afterwards. Right, right, right. It's a really cool way of more expression. There are so, so many cool synths out there, or so many cool orchestra libraries, libraries of, of acoustic instruments. And often you just play a melody, pretty straightforward, and then you spend half an hour to edit it. So that it sounds like like it was a real instrument that played. So the instrument or the keyboard and all those new controllers enable you to play really in a more expressive way. So yeah, we're really happy to have that in, in version one two also. And the last new thing because it's really about being quick and about having control. We have added new mapping functionality. I can actually map now anything that becomes bluish. I can map keys of the keyboard, of the computer keyboard, as well as MIDI messages now to all the controls, to all the clip slots. And what is also really cool is, let's say we want to control this fader, but with keys from the keyboard. So we have the mapping browser open now. And I press one. One is now mapped to the volume fader. And I can actually tell it, hey, when I press one, go to the full value of the fader. If I press 2, maybe go to, I don't know, minus 30 degrees. If I press 3, let's go down all the way. Boom, mapping done, really quick, and now I can jump between those values that I have set up yeah. using the keys. That one is saved with the document. If you have like your live gig document, you can have fixed mappings on the clip slots to start them. On top of that, there is now the preferences. The global shortcuts list. It's just all functions that are in the software. All those shortcuts that are in are the current standard shortcuts that we had before. You can add now shortcuts to functions where there were no shortcuts yet. And you can change the ones to read it. This column actually is for the keyboard shortcuts of the computer keyboard. Third column is a MIDI column again. Ah, okay. So everything that's in the software, in the GUI, like select a track or extend selection, everything you can see here. Project, activate the engine, export audio, so those menu functions you can map now to MIDI. So really great control over the whole software. Nice and, uh, and clear uh, menu. Exactly. And those are all the things that we added to one two. And on the NAMM show we only showed the new browser and the group tracks. And yeah, the instrument support, we added that on top of that, the new controller assignments, the new mappings, and we will finish that thing, polish that a bit off and found the beta. Clear? Uh, thank you very much for the demo. Welcome. And uh, I hope you have a lot of fun on the We do, message. we do. Great show for us.